So it goes on in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 20, who reconciled us to him through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors of, for Christ. That's what our job is. Romans 8, 23, having the first fruit of the Spirit, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons. Salvation comes when you first get saved, you get saved in your spirit. Then the Holy Spirit starts working through your soul to get the tears out, and then you're saved in your body. There's three parts to salvation. You're not done when you get saved in your spirit, when you get a new spirit. You're not done. Most people believe, oh, well, who? I get to go to heaven and I'm saved. Well, but you have, yes, but you have an, a calling to come to the fullness of Christ. And that's get those tears out and become perfect. Be saved all the way through spirit, soul, and body. And that's what that's showing you. God sent his son that he might receive the, adopt, the adoption as sons. Adoption as sons. Oneness with the Father because you are his sons. You are no longer a slave but a son. And if a son, I'm not the stuff on the bottom of the shoe. I'm an heir. And I'm not going to let the devil try to tell me that I'm not. And that I'm going to get whooped. I have authority over him. The wicked is going to be swept away. And I'm going to stand there and I'm going to say, I know my God's going to show up. Because he will. Amen, Tracy? Amen. Fellowship with Jesus in the sufferings. Philippians 3, 8 through 11. Look what he says. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. He's talking about Christ. But Christ, well, we'll get to that in just a second. But anyway, I have suffered the loss of all things. That I may, why, why do we suffer the loss of all things? Three things. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. That is why we suffer the loss of all things. Because this world hates Jesus. And if we're going to be with Jesus, we're going to be hated. If you're not being hated or pursued in this world, I doubt you're walking with him. In order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. That's what tonight is about. Because if you suffer with him, you will rule and reign with him. It says, for this reason I endure all things for the sake of those who are chosen. Who are the chosen ones? There are chosen ones that were chosen to have the fullness of Christ. There was, everybody has the opportunity to have the fullness of Christ. But there were chosen ones that are out there and they don't know that they're chosen. Did you know that Revelation 6 it talks about the fifth seal. And the, the souls are going, how long, Lord, must we continue to suffer? And he says, until the, number, the full number of your brethren come in. The full number of your brethren. What in the world? Those are all the people that are called to suffer with you. And we have to continue to suffer until they realize they're part of this too. <laughs> That's why I'm out there going, where are you? <laughs> suffer with me. I talked to a girl today. I'm like... What are you doing? Get the religion out of you. Let's, let's suffer. It's about suffering. Because did you know that if you don't suffer, hear me guys, if you don't suffer, you have no authority. You have no authority. You've got religion and you've got a Bible. But that ain't going to do any good when a demon's in your face. Devils only know one thing, and that's authority. And that's what I'm here to teach you tonight. Because I've been called to raise up warriors that are willing to suffer. I've been called to do that. And the Lord told me, and I'm sorry guys, but the Lord told me, he said, when my presence hits that church, they're not going to want to leave. So I apologize for the ones that might think this is a little bit long, but the Lord gave this to me. And I want to show you, if you want to see what we're called to do and what you know, it'll help you because it helps me to hear the word. It encourages me, okay? But it's going to take some time and I'm, I'm going I'm to dig it through. If you got to go, you got to go because I'm going to be obedient. 
But anyway, so that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus and with it eternal glory. That's the whole point is I want to rule and reign with him. I want eternal glory, which is the fullness. You're born with apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, one of those. But you're to come to all five. And that's the way you do it is by studying the word. And by the word, God will start speaking to you and you start obeying. And when you obey and you make choices, then you start moving in judgment and in prophetic sacrifice and then in authority. And you lay that foundation as we continue to talk about it every week. But that's how it works. And then you advance. And you overcome these seven evil spirits that are trying to keep you from going into the eternal glory. And he says, it's a trustworthy statement. For if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we suffer with him, it's not my words, it's the Bible. We will also reign with him. If we deny him, though, he will also deny us. So what it says, if you want your ooey gooey message that you're going to uh, get raptured and go to heaven, I'm not your teacher because I don't believe in it. I believe in suffering and having authority over the enemy. And staying right here and saying, I ain't moving. My daddy says I have authority over you and I'm not moving. You're moving. That mountain's going to move in Jesus' name. And I'm not afraid. Rapture mentality and all that stuff, it's all about fear. And I'm not afraid. Keep in mind that Christ is the anointed one. When we say Christ, there's Jesus. In the Bible, we see Jesus. We see Jesus Christ. We see Christ Jesus, and we see Christ. When you see Jesus, that is weak man. That is just man, Jesus. When you see where it uses the word Jesus in the verse, it's just talking about Jesus who came down to be a human, okay? And that means us, okay? When you see Jesus, you can put your name in there. That's us, okay? But when you see Jesus Christ, that is when you have Christ in you, and he's starting to form in you, okay? When you see Christ Jesus, that's when Christ is ruling over Jesus. He is advanced in the seven seals to where the spirit is stronger than the soul in Jesus. And when you see Christ, there's no Jesus there. That means it's fully enveloped, or that means that you are the Messiah. You are the anointed one. But the body of Christ is the anointed one. It's a whole body, and you're called the body of Christ. We're not the head. Jesus is the head. Jesus Christ is the head. Christ Jesus is the head. We are the body. And everybody that says that they're the body of Christ, not necessarily. Okay? But Ephesians 4, 12 through 14, so you can see it. To the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. What's a fullness of Christ look like? It's when we all have the fullness, our five-fold ministry, and we all come together as a body. It's going to be a glorious thing. Amen? Jesus was an example of what the Father calls his Christ. He was an example but we're part of that too. And so everything that Jesus experienced, you're called to experience also. I don't have an ooey gooey message. You're called to endure for the sake of others. Now, Psalm 22, we talked about, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Forsaken is the word azab, and it means to loosen your hold. Can you feel what Jesus was feeling? Can you feel what I'm feeling, what you're feeling? Why have you forsaken me, Father? Why am I standing here at the Red Sea and it ain't parting easily like it was? <laughs> Relinquish, to refuse. He was forsaken by his last friend. His father, God himself. You know, he patiently bore all the other trials that he had to go through, right? But when he was forsaken of God, that's it. He cries out bitterly and says, My God! I mean, he was beaten 39 times with the cat of nine tails. 
ripped his skin where you could see the bone. He could barely walk. He was, he was nailed to the cross, carrying it up, all that. I mean, I'm sorry, carrying the cross, and then he was nailed to the cross. He didn't say a word. He didn't open his mouth. 